In this section, we are going to look at the group IH and many of its 22 subgroups. We recall that C60, Buckminster Fullerene, is the most uh, important and famous example of a molecule uh, that is in the IH point group. However, it is often easier to see the subgroup relationships with the standard icosahedron rather than the truncated icosahedron that is found in C60. Here we see an example and in the standard icosahedron there are 12 vertices. So rather than 60 atoms to worry about, we only have 12. And we can use this to uh, figure out the uh, various point groups and their uh, symmetry operations. One of the most important symmetry operations of the icosahedron is the C5 rotation. And with this particular model, we can demonstrate that operation. So, for example, we can set it up in this sort of way. And we have a cap which you can put on top like this. So, if we put our cap on top, it lines up perfectly. So, what we can do is if we do a C5 rotation, so let's do a C5 here. So, we rotate counterclockwise by a fifth of a turn. You see that when we do that, all the atoms line up perfectly. And we get the same uh, reaction if we try to turn a fifth of a turn clockwise. So this is our C5 to the minus 1. By the same token, we have uh, several different C5s in that we can go two C5s in a row. So we have C5 followed by another C5. And this gives us C5 squared. So we see that C5, C5 to the minus 1, C5 squared are all symmetry operations of the icosahedral group. A second symmetry operation, an important rotation that we have for IH, is a C2 operation. So if we set up this particular cap this way, so we see that if we rotate by a half of a turn, so we rotate by half of a turn, that the atoms line up perfectly again. So if we go in the opposite direction, we do a half of a turn clockwise, we also see that all the atoms line up perfectly. Since that is true, that tells us that C2 is a symmetry operation of this particular group. Uh, we have mirrors and, and, and C3 operation. And the other one which I'd like to demonstrate with this particular model is inversion. So if we look carefully in the center of the molecule, we can see this particular piece of wood, this stick here, and this is demonstrating the center of inversion. So connecting any two pairs of atoms on opposite side of the icosahedron, where you can connect them with this kind of a stick, and at the very center of the stick, the stick will go directly through the center of inversion of the molecule. And the distance from any atom at a vertex to the other to the center is exactly the same for any of the atoms. So this is a nice way of demonstrating the center of inversion for the icosahedral group using an actual icosahedron. Here is a slightly substituted icosahedron. At 10 of the vertices, we still have the red atom, but at two of the positions, here and at the opposite end, we have blue atoms. So you have 10 reds and two blues, and the two blues are on opposite sides of each other. And we can see from the stick that's in there that this particular molecule also has a center of inversion. But we no longer have the icosahedral point group IH anymore. But we can look for the high order rotation axis. And we notice that if we look along the axis uh, connecting the two blue atoms, we can check for a 
C5 rotation. So we can use the piece that we used before to demonstrate C5. So we notice that if we make a one-fifth of a turn counterclockwise, that all the red atoms line up perfectly. Uh, so this tells us that C5 is a uh, symmetry operation of this particular group. If we rotate clockwise by a fifth of a turn, we see that C5 to the minus one is also a symmetry operation of this particular group. One thing to notice about the way this particular capping piece is made is that while it has five red atoms along the corners of what makes a pentagon, it's cut out at the top. And this is quite intentional because if this is a C5 rotation, any atom that lies along the axis stays put, essentially. So it doesn't matter what color we have at this center point. It doesn't matter. Uh, all that matters is that around the edges, at the five vertices of the pentagon, that those are all the same exact atom for this to be a C5 rotation. Therefore, what we have in this particular molecule is we reduce the symmetry from IH down to D5D. And you can somewhat see the D5D-ish type imagery if you look along this axis in the sense that you can see the five-pointed star in front. This is the, the top of the five-pointed star here um, pointing up, whereas along the back we can see a five-pointed star and the sorry, top point is along the bottom. So we can see that it's flipped around. And this is very similar to the uh, situation we would see in the staggered conformation of ferrocene. So this, we recognize this from another important uh, chemical example of the point group D5D. As we had looked at previously using Lagrange's theorem, we noticed that it was certainly possible that D5D could be a subgroup of IH. And if we check each and every symmetry operation of D5D, we would see that each is included in the group IH. Therefore, D5D is a subgroup of IH. Here we have another substituted icosahedron. It's similar to the previous example in that at each end we have replaced red atoms with blue atoms, but also along one of the pentagons, we replaced five of the reds with five yellows. So if we look at it from the top, we see one blue, five yellows. If we look from the other end, we see one blue and five reds. So this has two blues, five reds, and five yellows. So what we would like to see is what is the point group of this particular molecule. So we recognize from this end, we can do it quickly, just show you what you've seen before, is that we can easily show that it has a C5 rotation. So we have a C5 axis along this direction. So we would like to also see what happens to the back atoms when we do the same sort of rotation. So we can flip the molecule over like this. And we see that we can put another cap on top. And again, if we turn clockwise, we see that all the atoms line up. So even from this direction, we have a C5 axis. But since these are yellows and not red, we have reduced the point group symmetry from D5D down to C5V. So we've gone from D5D to C5V. So we still would have vertical mirrors. Vertical mirrors would go along this direction. So there's where the mirrors would go. So we go along between these atoms and then between these two yellows. And there are five of these vertical mirrors. Now one thing which is a little bit of a mistake in the building of this molecule, we have a stick in the center. Now a stick corresponds to where the C5 axis is. But it is a mistake, it's a slight mistake in that it has um, a little dash where the center is. Now this might lead you to imagine that this particular molecule has a center of inversion. And it looks, at least initially, like that's true because this stick is connecting a blue atom on one side to a blue atom on the other side. 
But we'd also notice if we turn it sideways, that if we were trying to connect any other set of pairs of atoms, we would try to connect a yellow to a red, and that doesn't work. So we would see that this molecule does not have a center of inversion, no matter the fact that the stick that is inside it seems to imply that it does. But this is C5V. C5V, unlike D5D, does not have a center of inversion.